What's going on, Average Tech Guy here, and today we are back, more tech, more reviews. And you know how I feel about this device back behind me. This is my iPad, and I use it pretty much on a daily basis. So you gotta have memory. You gotta have some kind of storage because these things are limited, and I normally buy the lowest tier and then just use SSD or, or memory cards or something like that since we now have that capability. But Samsung has come out with this ultra portable, indestructible SSD. And this is the Samsung T7 Shield. Now, I picked this one up in one terabyte and I did get the blue color. This is IP65 water resistant, it's dust resistant, and it is three meters drop resistant. So, let's talk about it. <laughs> So this is it. This is the Samsung T7 Shield. Now, this is what it looks like. Water resistant, dust resistant, drop resistant, up to three meters. It does have this TPU, this rubberized TPU all around the edges. So if you drop it, it just kind of bounces around. It does make a lot of noise, but it does just bounce around. You do get Samsung logo up front, just like so. And then on the back, you get T7 Shield. So this is the Shield, this is the SSD. It has a USB type C port and then nothing on the side. And it also has an LED right here which will light up when you plug it in just to let you know that the power is going to it and that it is transferring your data. Now this is the T7 Shield. Previous years, Samsung has had the T7. T7 came in two different variations. It came in this one with the touch or the fingerprint scanner on it, and it also comes like a regular one. In previous times to that, we had the T5. T5 is just a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. T5 had no fingerprint scanner on it, and it came in a bunch of different colors, about five different colors. Fast forward to 2022, we now have this rough, rugged T7 Shield. Now in the box with the T7 Shield, you are gonna get a few things. You get your instructions, which are somewhere in this room that I can't find right now. Probably still in the box though. And then um, you get these two cables. One is USB type C to C. The other is USB type A to USB type C. Now I do appreciate the attention to detail on these just because normally when other companies send these out, they're like hard and rigid. These are nice and flexible, nice and bendy. I like that a lot. I like the way they feel. And these normally flow with just about any SSD that you have. So just keep that in mind. This device does have password protection. It supports speeds up to 1,050 megabytes on the read side and 1,000 megabytes on the write side. It's also supported by USB 3.2 Gen 2, up to 10 gigabytes per second, and it utilizes the NVMe interface, which is one of the fastest rates of performance that you can get. Super durable. It's equipped with an IP65 rating for water and dust, and it also has a strengthened outer shell for up to three meters of drop resistance. And it also, once again, password protection. We can't stress that enough. Everybody, like if somebody picks this up, they can plug it in and just use it. But if you go ahead and put your password on there, you are going to be good to go. It supports PC, phones, and other devices such as tablets, and also Samsung's portable SSD software will work with this, and you can download that on Mac OS, Windows 7 or higher, and Android 5.1 or higher, so just keep that in mind. So now that we got all the formalities out of the way, let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in to the iPad and see how fast the data actually flows. Okay, so for this demonstration, this is my stand from Banks. This is the Infinity iPad Pro stand. I'm gonna be using this to kind of prop it up and set it up. If you wanna know more about this actual stand itself though, I got a full review on it. Um, and I'll drop a link below so you can check it out for yourself. So first things first, I'm gonna dim that screen down just a little bit so we get a better color on there. And now let's get everything set up. So we're just gonna be taking these off and we're gonna be plugging this device directly in just to get started. Now, from what I know and from past um, experiences, Samsung does not have a dedicated application for this device on the iPad. So let's just see 
and make sure. Because many people are going to want to know this. So as we can see, Samsung has no dedicated um, application. We're going to just type in SSD behind there and still nothing comes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Z Flip 4 and we're just going to go in here and we're going to type in Samsung SSD. And even though I spell Samsung incorrectly, it still has the portable SSD application. So Apple still does not have that. Just keep in mind, you cannot enable your password unless you have that application. So on your iPad, you will not be able to enable it. You can enable it on your Windows and your Android devices, but not on your iPad. You can even activate it on your MacBook. So just keep that in mind. So since we do have this connected, what I want to first do is just go to files and I do have a couple of larger files on here that I kind of want to send back and forth. First off, you want to know that it does pop up over here in the corner and it gives you all your built in information right there up front. And once you have that, you're good to go. So you can basically select a bunch of different things like one, two, three. I'm going to select all this stuff. Um, boom, 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 and da, 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 and uh, all these videos is 22 items. I think that file is gonna be the one just to do. So this file has 22 videos in it, and what I want to do. So as you can see, we do have a status up here in the little top part of our screen, and we do get the LED status right here, letting us know that it is doing its thing. So once that little bar or that little circle fills all the way in, all 22 of those videos will be transferred over. So this is approximately to going on about a minute and a half, two minutes now that those videos are going over. And then we'll stop and we'll look at that file and just see how big the file was. So it is done and I'm going to hold this. I want to get the info for this and this whole file or this whole folder. Let's see, was 24.93 gigabytes. So not bad at all. Uh, 24 gigabytes in a minute and a half to two minutes is awesome, uh, especially when you are constantly sending these large files back and forth, back and forth constantly from, from cameras to computers and so forth and so on, from tablets to computers. It's really helpful when you have something that works really fast and really quick. So I like it. It's one of those things where from the iPad, you don't have to eject it. You can't even eject it. You just kind of got to disconnect and it doesn't harm it. I've never had anything happen, but let's plug it back up just to make sure that all the files went over. So I'm just going to plug it up. I'm going to go back into my files and it should pop up right here. Took no time. Once it's in there, I want to open that up and all my videos are right there for the picking. So worked really well. Now, the other thing is you can actually watch these videos directly from this device. So if you got videos on here and you come here, you can actually watch the videos right here. This is just me at work. This is also me at work and you can just take these videos wherever you go. So if you do have old files, old videos, things like that, and you want to put them on a storage such as this one, feel free to do so. Um, Let's unplug this and when you unplug it, everything should disappear. There we go. So if you do have a lot of old files, um, videos, things that you stored on one of these, you can take it wherever you go. You can plug it in and you can play directly from here or you can upload and play that way. Either way, I think this is something really good, especially for people who take these types of things everywhere you go. Like on vacation, if you drop it, you don't have to worry about it. So just remember the IP65 water resisting or the rating on here doesn't mean that it can be fully submerged, but if it gets like sprayed with water guns and uh, rained on a little bit, it should still be fine. So you can't submerge it, but you know, you should be good with anything else. So hopefully this has been able to help someone out. I'll be sure and drop a link below so you can check this out for yourself. I'm going to add it to my collection, use it, and hopefully it works out. Until next time, Average Tech Guy out. Peace.